Hi and welcome to Steve Chats Wrestling hashtag SCW right here on YouTube.com. Think of choosing the channel and choosing the video. You can subscribe right now. Leave any comments in the comment section. Also like and share the video. Going to do something very new for you now because it's pretty much Monday morning. So I'll give you all the news to wake up to. I'm going to call it the Grapple Gazette episode one for you. So a lot of news round up for you here. Give my opinions on them as well. Going to try and get through as many stories as possible for you. That uh, you've got everything going into a brand new week in the wrestling world if you like this then do hit the like button and uh, let me know in the comment section what you think if you prefer the videos all to be in separate then also let me know in the comments below we got videos uh, or stories should we say on page alberto del rio smackdown championships the undertaker triple h and many many more so let's not waste any time getting straight into it shall we Paige is going to be kicking us off now via ringside news. Many fans have been wondering what's happened to her. Once an integral part of the women's division, uh, she's all but faded and rarely competes even at non-televised shows these days. Sarah Knight, WWE star's mother, said on Saturday that she'd been out due to a variety of injuries. Now, this we already know, and also Dave Meltzer reporting saying that higher-ups were worried about her status, um, but they would not elaborate on what those issues were. Many fans have wondered if the injury was a cover-up uh, from her hiatus from the ring, but that's not the case she is actually injured according to Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Radio um, and regards to the fact that if she wasn't injured she'd still be wrestling whatever the problems were with herself and WWE. Meltzer has also described this friction as non-insignificant Paige is next scheduled for another evaluation on August the 15th which will determine her next steps in her injury treatment so very interesting stuff indeed and um, obviously it just goes to confirm once again she is injured we know now her next steps as well and it mainly says that there could still be problems really within WWE hopefully we'll learn more if there is or isn't but of course her partner Alberto Del Rio is rumored to be having a few problems amongst WWE as well so this is brought to you by DWN um, there was Alberto Del Rio there's been rumors going around he's unhappy and likely to leave his contract when it expires in October Vincent Mann had talked about pushing Del Rio going into the WWE draft but Triple H wanted to back off uh, the push because of his contract status and um, that's exactly what has happened looking at things in an update there it continues to be a lot more talk about Dio Rio not re-signing and leaving the company um, we've also had the fact that Triple H just doesn't like Del Rio going around a lot more so I mean Del Rio as well can make some money out of the company so it seems to me really that he could be on his way especially with the contract expiring in October he doesn't seem happy and perhaps Del Rio not going to put him anywhere either he can do just as well in Mexico, to be fair, with AAA or Lucha Underground, as said in previous posts. So, I mean, could he actually be taking Paige with him? Would Paige leave as well with problems in WWE if that happens to be true? Could they both go to TNA? We'll have to wait and see. But um, personally, for me, they seem to be a very popular couple. Every, every time I do a video here, people seem to be uh, interested in it. So, for me, really, I think WWE should really look into this and see that um, they are seen as relevant. So, maybe uh, we should see if uh, maybe they could actually be given some sort of like going forward and uh, hopefully really um, let's hope there isn't really many problems with Paige and the higher ups I mean I can see it personally I've said that maybe she's been on a bit of a downward spiral since the Stone Cold podcast it seemed pretty awkward watching her on there answering the questions and stuff so um, that's my viewpoint on it anyway but let me know your feelings in the comments below in another report in SmackDown, uh, going to be adding some championships, it seems, new women's championship and tag team titles, according to uh, DWN as well. Um, this is expected after SummerSlam. At one point, officials have pretty much nixed plans for the new SmackDown titles, but uh, now those uh, seem to be back on. There's a lot of talk of bringing um, back former tag team champions as well to help the depth of the SmackDown tag team division. The latest word is that the new titles will debut the Tuesday after SummerSlam in Uncas. Ville, um, which is not a lock by the way so it means that could change but um, personally for me I would have actually had the women's champion and the tag team champions on both shows I think it would have made things kind of fresh and the titles would still mean more it seems now that the championship is going to be divided again and with the universal championship does that mean we're to get a universal women's champion and universal tag team champions it then sort of gives Smackdown like it's copy and raw as well and it for me it just doesn't work for me less champions are more and it seems more important 
important and relevant. And I don't see why the champions can't be on both shows myself, but uh, that's my feeling anyway. Let me know your feelings in the comments below. Um, next, we're going to talk about The Undertaker. Now, um, W officials reportedly wanted The Undertaker involved in the WWE draft, but he's still saying he's done with wrestling, so that uh, he asked not to be included. Because he's still signed to a deal, WWE would have been able to actually use the name in the draft, but uh, it just didn't seem to make sense with his future up in the air. Now, I personally agree with that, and personally for me, with The Undertaker, I wouldn't have bothered putting him in the draft either. I like the fact that he's seen as a free agent, because if he changes his mind, which I'm expecting he will around WrestleMania time to have one last WrestleMania match, I mean, The Undertaker then can actually pick his opponent, pick the scenario, and have the choice of everything, maybe, probably, maybe even money as well, who knows, but um, it certainly seems to me that... Uh, everything is in favour of The Undertaker if he has one more match or not and I think if it's going to happen it's going to be at Wrestlemania I don't see him going on the road any time between now and then which means it seems kind of a bit silly to put him on Raw or Smackdown but uh, when he comes back it gives him a freedom to go wherever he wants and whoever he's going to face maybe he can be spending more time on that show the same said for Triple H as well regarding him there was talk of having him in the draft but uh, he held off because there's uncertainty around his in-ring future as well the game is planning on wrestling at Wrestlemania 33 next year but hasn't decided on an opponent or even narrowed it down at last word some believe that Triple H will be facing an up and coming talent at next year's Wrestlemania event in Orlando for me there's only two opponents that seem kind of relevant that could be against Triple H one being Seth Rollins of course with a history before uh, teaming up or being a part of the authority uh, storyline in 2014 and 15 it would make sense for them to have the, the fallout and the subsequent feud and match at Wrestlemania also for me Finn Balor would be an also suitable opponent because even if he wins the Universal Championship, um, for me he's not going to be main eventing WrestleMania next year, even if he is main eventing or a high place in SummerSlam. A feud against Triple H would definitely help him at first WrestleMania as well and uh, I think that definitely would be a sensible way to go either of those two as opponents. But uh, let me know who you'd like to see Triple H face at next year's WrestleMania and also who you think will be main eventing next year's WrestleMania. Of course there was talk as well with uh, before Raw and SmackDown matches against each other potentially at the big shows. For me I kind of feel that the main event next year is still going to be John Cena versus Roman Reigns for the championship and potentially where Cena could actually then tie at Ric Flair's record but uh, that is yet to be known, so I have to wait and see if that does or doesn't happen. And next, we're going to be talking about TNA star Jeff Hardy. Now, apparently, Jeff Hardy has been um, wrestling her at the moment. Now, apparently, he was hurt when filming the motorcycle incident a couple of weeks ago for TNA programming. It's been said that Jeff landed wrong. Hardy would go on to wrestle matches after the incident still being hurt. It said that when Hardy caused the scene at the July 22nd Bloody Mania 10 event, he went into the event already hurt. Now, of course, he was actually given some attention after that as well. So, uh, it goes to show, really, that uh, it didn't look right. I don't understand, actually, why TNA did that again, where they filmed at that moment again where he hurt himself. I, I know they're trying to make the storyline and it seemed really cool from a storyline perspective but for me it just seemed reckless and uh, if Jeff Hardy is hurt I mean he's gone through enough as it is really with injuries in the last couple of years it doesn't seem to make sense to make him do unnecessary risks but that's just me um, we're going to move on next to ringsidenews.com and back to WWE there's been talk within repackaging Tyler Breeze and giving him a push perhaps even outside of the mid card this could also lead to a possible push for Fandango as well one idea being discussed is giving them a different look and feel to the Breeze Ango tag team. Now for me, I'm a fan of Breeze Ango. I just don't like the name. That's all I would change, but um, certainly not for Breeze. Uh, I think there'd be copywriting. But anyway, looking at it, I mean, uh, for me, I think the team kind of works and um, maybe by repackaging, maybe just little tweaks here and there to maybe take the comedy element out of the tag team, maybe have a, a slightly more serious feel. But I think as a team, it works and they could do well going forward. Next, we're going to be talking about the potential of Jay Leafield potentially joining WWE. He was on Jim Ross's Ross's Report and uh, whilst on there, he had to say the following. Most of the wrestlers from my generation, I love for pro wrestling started with watching the WWF. So for me personally, it would be very cool if it was just a minute to get to work for the company that started my love for pro wrestling. Yes, I would definitely work for them given the right time and the right circumstance. Now, for me, I mean, Jay Lee has always been a long time now uh, ROH champion. Um, top of the company and has done pretty well in companies like uh, TNA as well in the past I'd be quite happy to see him get a shot in WWE, NXT or even the main roster um, definitely would have this new era feel 
going forward as well. And uh, and like I always say, SmackDown could always do with a few extra people on that SmackDown Live. And uh, I personally would be a fan of Jay Lee for joining. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Um, to finish off this particular video, then we're going to be talking about Conor McGregor. That's right. More stars have been coming out and talking about his uh, comments calling WWE stars um, pussies. Now, before I read some of the tweets out of what some of the superstars have actually sent in, I'm going to have my say on this because I said before about it potentially being a work and it still could be a work. But you have to remember that these comments are being made in preparation for the UFC um, 202 fight. Um, that he's got coming up. So, I mean, this is clearly could be for publicity as well. And of course, get his name talking. Of course, a lot of people have been responding to this. So his name definitely is trending and in the news coming up to the fight. Um, and of course, that's what Conor McGregor does as well. So um, it'll be very interesting to see where this is going forward. But um, uh, I mean, Jonathan Coachman has actually come out and said that uh, he said that uh, smart dudes know what's good for business. So Coach is clearly on the side that this is just promotional work. Uh, the likes of Ric Flair has actually had his say coming from a guy who built his career copying my persona. I expect that the type of class we get from a Ronda or Anderson. After Diaz finishes you again, I dare you to try guys like Dolph, Brock, or Fit. Oh, and you're welcome for your gimmick. Now, of course, um, Brock Lesnar has well as had UFC experience. Fit Finley goes without saying. Dolph Ziggler is actually um, a amateur wrestling champion, so he certainly can hold his own, uh, no question about it. Big E's had his say, and he said, would you prefer to have us individually or all like Line up at once. I know your time is valuable, sir. So clearly, um, poking fun at his comments. Kofi Kingston saying that uh, he needs a bowl of bootios right now. Uh, Chris Jericho, definitely one of my favourites one. But sorry, pal, no disrespect to you, but my fights are legit. Unlike the fixed fights you have in UFC, I'll embarrass you. Um, I mean, UFC, of course, yeah, you are sometimes fed guys. Um, but WWE, of course, is scripted. I mean, these guys are actually professionally trained athletes. You have to remember that with WWE guys, they're not just softies that are going around acting. They're actually trained. They know what they're doing. And of course, um, some people say the element of fake. It's not fake as such. They're just trained and experienced and know what they're doing. Of course, they are actually flying around the ring and landing, but they just know how to land. They know how to do what they're doing. Of course, sometimes it goes wrong. But I mean, if you put someone like Conor McGregor in that environment, would he actually be able to cope? I don't know. He's turning around saying that he uh, can hang with people like Floyd Mayweather. Personally, for me, I think McGregor is writing a few checks that maybe he cannot cash. Uh, time will tell. And of course, it's going to start with Diaz first. But going back to more stars that have actually had their say on this, AJ Styles has said that he thought McGregor would actually do well in a featherweight division. Uh, it's a shame that WWE doesn't have one. Uh, Seamus has said that never show a Jack Russell mirror. He thinks it's a majestic Irish wolfhound. Really, just an annoying wee yapper trying to sell tickets. Bubba Ray Dudley saying that he would pay good money to see Kurt Angle stretch the piss out of uh, Conor McGregor and make him tap of course I did a video already saying Kurt Angle's reaction on this do check that out now on my channel and finally Rusev actually having his say so much for a talk for a guy who fights 15 minute matches twice a year good for you Conor McGyver there's one other question we have to ask ourselves is if Vince McMahon is actually on board with all so many superstars getting in touch and saying their feelings on the situation WWE are not normally so public on these sort of things so it can again question maybe if this is a work but at the same time maybe if it's uh, calling the integrity of the company, then maybe the Vince Man is all aboard of these guys actually biting back and having their say. But anyway, that has been the first then instalment of the Grapple Gazette there for you. If you like this, let me know and leave it in the comments section below. Uh, subscribe to the channel as well. I'm near 60 subscribers now and I'd really like to hear that milestone as soon as possible. I thank everybody for their support so far. I've been checking out this channel, viewing it and enjoying it as well. But um, let me know anything you want to talk about in the comments below and also like and share the video. Subscribe. You've been watching Steam Chats Wrestling right here on YouTube.com. Take care.